I'm JJ Verger, Application Engineer here at ANSYS, and today I'm going to go over a few of the new features with the 2023 R2 release of Behavior Execution Engine. Uh, now, so for those of you that are not familiar with Behavior Execution Engine, it is an MBSE enabling capability that allows you to bridge the gap between the system model that is developed as part of your system engineering process and your analytical models that are developed as part of that uh, modeling and simulation process. So ultimately what we're talking about is being able to orchestrate bringing those system models into your analysis tools so you can better understand how your system is going to operate within the mission context. With the 2023 R2 release, there's really two features that I want to go over today. The first is that we've added support for SDK Engine. Uh, so if you previously were using SDK with some of your behavior execution engine simulations, you know that you were restricted to using SD SDK Desktop. Uh, however, we've added support now for SDK Engine. The other uh, improvement we've made is with how Behavior Execution Engine executes within a model center workflow. Uh, so previously, the execution engine was dependent on the specific SysML modeling tool. And so during the workflow execution in model center, that modeling tool would be opened to allow Behavior Execution Engine to run. With the 2023 R2 release, we've removed that dependency, and so Behavior Execution Engine now runs in its own process without needing that SysML uh, modeling tool. Okay, let's dig in a little bit deeper and see how to use some of these new features. So we'll start off with looking at how we can enable SDK Engine uh, to be used within our simulations. Okay, let's dig into uh, how we can use SDK Engine with our simulations. So what I have up here is our existing search and rescue example. And I've just completed a simulation run. And I've done that within SDK Desktop because you know, there's many benefits to doing so. We get visual feedback as the simulation runs. We can add annotation as the simulation completes. We can also use it as a way to you know, develop and debug our simulation. But at this point, I'm really happy with the way my simulation is running. And now I want to improve the performance I'm going to get by running this same simulation in SDK Engine. So to set that up, I'm going to go over into my Cameo project. And I can look at how I have my simulation specification block set up. Now, the existing setup has the Moxie SDK existing process stereotype applied to this block. To enable SDK Engine with this simulation, I'm going to follow a similar setup process as I would have done for this block, only use a different stereotype. So as I look at another block, uh, simulation specification block, I can walk us through the process of setting all of that up. If I open up the specification for this block and look at the applied stereotype field, I can now search through the available stereotypes using the keyword engine. And I'll notice that there's now two new stereotypes available to me. One is for running with SDK engine and a new scenario, and one is running with SDK engine from an existing scenario. Since I know I have an existing scenario, that's the option I'm going to select, and I'll click Apply. To finish setting everything up, I'm going to come over to the tags, look for, that, uh, for these new uh, fields that I can now populate. One is going to be to give my simulation the path uh, to my SDK scenario. And this other option allows me to control whether or not SDK Engine will run in no graphics mode or if it will run with graphics enabled. To get the most performance out of my simulation, I'm going to select to uh, run this with the graphics enabled mode set to false and that will improve my performance even more. So before I run, I can just make sure that I have all of the stereotypes and annotations applied to this block the way that I want. And what I've done with this project is I've actually created a separate simulation configuration block that points at this simulation specification. 
So if I want to run my simulation now, but using SDK Engine, I can simply select that new simulation configuration from the dropdown, click play, and I'll see in my console at the bottom, just like I've seen before, that my simulation has started, it's connecting to SDK Engine, and eventually once that is booted up and the whole process is running, I'll start to see the annotations on my state machine diagrams, just like I expect from uh, the process when I connect with SDK Desktop. Let's move on and look at the other feature I talked about, which is how we've improved the way that Behavior Execution Engine runs within Model Center. Now, previously, if I had a Model Center workflow like this one set up, and I were to open up the uh, component um, plugin configuration for B, I would have noticed that Cameo would start up in the background as well. Now that doesn't happen because B is going to run in a separate process from that SysML modeling tool. So just as before with this B plugin to Model Center, I can select to configure this plugin to run against a certain simulation, a certain configuration within that simulation, and then select the variables I'm interested in. So if you noticed, that opened up this uh, console window. This is the window where B is actually running now that we have made this improvement. So I can set up the simulation the, the way that I want by selecting the right um, simulation configuration. I can also select which variables that I want as inputs and outputs. And all of that runs without needing that SysML modeling tool open. Then I can run this simulation just as before. And I will note that in the background, in that console window, I can see the same output I would see within Cameo also streaming to this window. In addition, because I don't have any visual information on my states and how I'm transitioning between those, I will also see output that describes how those transitions are happening, which states are active. Now, when we put these two features together, they can become really powerful when we look at scaling up our B simulations. So the fact that we don't need to have the visual overhead with SDK Desktop and the fact that we no longer are dependent on our SysML modeling tool to run that B simulation means that we're now really only limited by the number of licenses we have for uh, our SDK products and our B products, and we can scale this simulation up within Model Center while we're doing trade studies or doing design of experiments. So for example, let's take a look at this same workflow and just set up a quick trade study to see how we can do that. So this simulation is actually based on a training model we use, which models a race between the famous tortoise and hare. So let's take a look at maybe what kind of uh, performance or result we get if we change the amount of time that our hair takes a nap in the middle of the race. So I can simply drag that input over into this window, and what I'm really interested in is making sure that that tortoise is the winner, because I like my fable the way that it's, it's supposed to end. So I can give some starting values and ending values for the amount of time that that uh, hair might take a nap. Model Center is going to take care of calculating out what the step size is or the number of samples based on my inputs here. Now, the other thing that I want to set up is under my Tools menu and in the Preferences, I can select to run this with multiple copies of this simulation running at the same time. So for demonstration purposes, I've set that to five, but of course, depending on the architecture that's available to you and your compute resources, licenses, that could be a much larger number. If I select to run this simulation now, we'll see that the trade study gets created, all of my design instances are created, and I'm now running this simulation five at a time to complete this trade study. So we'll let that trade study complete, and when we're all done, we can look through the results that we get back, and we can identify, in this case, the exact amount of sleep that the hare would need in order to win the race. So it looks like if the hare were to only nap for 173 seconds, then our tortoise would lose, but anything over that, and the tortoise will still be the victor in our race. 
I think that just about does it for the main new features that are included with the 2023 R2 release of Behavior Execution Engine. There are a handful of other enhancements that have been made. So if you're interested in looking at those, I suggest you go check out our help page and look at the new features listed there. I appreciate uh, you taking the time with us. If you're interested in learning more, you can head over to uh, ansys.com and find out more about what we can do for you and enabling your MBSE workflows.